Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 3 Righteousness by Grace by Don Crow. Today we are going to look at the subject of righteousness by grace. Romans 3, verses 21 to 23 says, but now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Notice that this scripture says, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed. I once asked a man, what do you think you have to do in order to go to heaven? He responded that he should keep the Ten Commandments, be faithful to his wife, live a moral life, plus a number of other things. I said, do you know what you have to do in order to go to heaven, to be in God's presence or in his kingdom? you would have to have a righteousness that equals God's righteousness. He said, I beg your pardon? There is no one who can have a righteousness that equals God's. Only one man had such righteousness, and that was Jesus Christ. I said, you have the point. That is exactly right. None of us, in our own selves, have ever kept the law or commandments perfectly, outwardly or inwardly. But we need a righteousness that equals God's in order to be acceptable before him. That is exactly what is said in verses 21 to 22. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. The kind of righteousness that God offers you and me is a righteousness that is through faith in Jesus Christ, and it is unto all and upon all who believe. There are two kinds of righteousness. The righteousness of man and the righteousness of God. The righteousness of man is a person's very best behavior and good works they do. But that can't make you acceptable before God. You need a righteousness that equals God's, and he is offering it to you. The righteousness of God that is without the law. In the Greek, there is no definite article which means that this text is really saying God is offering his own righteousness without law. A righteousness that is according to law is a righteousness of doing, earning, and achieving in order to be accepted before God. All the world religions today think you have to do, earn, and achieve in order for God to accept you. The word gospel means good news, and the good news of the gospel is that God is offering his very own righteousness and acceptance to all who will believe in what Jesus Christ provided, his death on the cross for our sins, imputing to us the righteousness that equals the law. This is the righteousness of God that is apart from the law, without us doing, earning, and achieving, and it comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Notice in verse 22 that it is the righteousness of God that is through faith in Jesus Christ unto all and upon all. Why is God offering his righteousness to everyone? For there is no difference, no distinction, 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You have sinned, I have sinned, and we all come short of God's standard or perfection. Because of our sin, the greatest thing we need is acceptance, right relationship and right standing with God. And God has offered this not through the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God does not come by your working, your trying, your earning, or your attempts to achieve. It comes through faith, dependence, and reliance upon the Lord Jesus Christ. How was Abraham, the Jewish forefather, saved? The Bible says he believed God, believed the promise God gave him, and then righteousness was imputed to his account. The fact that Abraham was declared righteous before God through his faith was not just for him alone. We read in Romans 3 verses 21 to 22 that a man is declared righteous through his faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that because of the payment Christ made on the cross when he shed his blood for our sins, righteousness, right standing, will be imputed to any person's account who simply believes upon Christ. Romans 5 verse 17 says, For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. God is offering you a gift of righteousness, a gift of right standing before him, a gift does cost something, but not to the person who receives it. If you gave me a gift and asked me to pay for it, it would not be a gift. But it did cost you something. God made righteousness available to you and me as a gift. And this gift of righteousness, acquittal, and right standing before God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read Titus 3 verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Question. Is the righteousness that we need a righteousness that we can produce? Answer. No. We read 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Question. What kind of righteousness do we need? Answer. The righteousness of God that comes through Christ. We read Romans 3, 22. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. Question. How do we receive this righteousness? Answer through faith in Jesus Christ. We read Philippians 3 verse 9. And to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, 
but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Question. What is the righteousness of the law? Answer. A righteousness belonging to me, a works righteousness that I can produce. We read Galatians 2 verse 21. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Question. How could we frustrate God's grace? Answer. We could frustrate God's grace by trying to be saved by our own good works instead of trusting Christ and his death for us, for our salvation. We read Romans 5.17. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Question. The righteousness of God is received as what? Answer. A gift. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway, taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.